back in session? Okay, so they're back in session. There's no, no actions to report out of closed session. I'll let you take a roll call again. Director Ferris. Here. Director Moran. Here. Director Falls. Here. President Swan. Here. Director Henry. Here. Okay. Uh, are there any additions or deletions to the open session agenda? Yes, there is. Uh, we'd like the staff is requesting that we delete item. And the, the board policy changes uh, from tonight's agenda. We will bring back it uh, at uh, another time. Okay. Does that take a vote? Uh, no, that would not require a vote. Okay, moving on to oral communications. Would our, would our audience like to offer any? Communications. <coughs> you were first, please. Um, I'm Cynthia Zenzel, I'm a right here in Felton. Um, first, I want to thank all the board members and staff who have taken the time to speak with me and other right here about their priorities and listen to our concerns. You are doing the community a great service by giving up so much of your time to educate yourselves and us about operations, finances, environmental impacts, and legal restrictions on the water district. Board members express the same concern I have about rate payers who are unable to pay their water bills. When a person does not pay in time, a notice is posted at their residence and they incur a charge of $25 to cover the cost of staff to identify the late payer and post the notice. If payment is not made by a certain date, their water is shut off. It will cost an additional $40 to turn the water back on. Ultimately, it will cost $115 to restore service for late payment on a $50 invoice. In 2012, California enacted the Human Right to Water Act, making it state policy that every human being has the right to safe, clean, affordable, and accessible water adequate for human consumption, cooking, and sanitary purposes. But the state has not developed a means of guaranteeing that right. The lawsuit against tiered rates has made that and some options possible only with additional costly studies and paperwork and a change in the law or a district-wide vote. However, the law can't stop us from helping our neighbors. I ask that you place this important issue on the agenda of the next scheduled finance committee. Elaine Fresco and I would like to present a possible option to help low-income uh, ratepayers with their water bills. Ideally, legal counsel and Rick Rogers or other staff would be present to comment and advise. We believe our solution <coughs> will not place, <coughs> excuse me, an undue burden <coughs> on staff or deprive the district of needed income and will make it possible to maintain rates for the majority of rate payers at the level required to accomplish all of the infrastructure improvements we know are desperately needed. Thank you. Yes, yeah. uh, my name is Dave Herbst. I recently put in a uh, application to serve on the Environment Committee, so I just wanted to introduce myself to the board. Um, I um, recently moved to the area about two years ago, 2017. Uh, before that, I was living in the eastern Sierra Nevada, a little town called Bishop. And I have devoted my uh, research career to uh, water quality investigations. And actually, during a two-year period, 2007 and 2008, I lived down at Pacific Grove. And I was affiliated then with the Granite Canyon Research Lab. And I did research on the San Lorenzo River and its tributaries, and especially looking at the effects of sediment in the river and the effects of sediment on uh, the life of the river. And I've also published papers on uh, uh, nutrients uh, in the San Lorenzo River Valley. If, if I can just interrupt, this yeah. item is on the agenda, oh, oh, and, oh. Yeah. and you will be asked oh. to give an intro and have plenty of time to speak during that item on the agenda. Sorry, I didn't have it. Uh, my, my apologies. Okay. I was being warned <laughs> to, to tell you to hold it, but I couldn't read lips. No. <laughs> Too rapid. Sorry. Does anybody else have any comments about things that are not on the agenda tonight? Yes. Um, I just want to just uh, put in my two cents about what Cynthia said. I'm not sure how things get put on the agenda or how you um, decide that. I know that this topic about helping low-income uh, ratepayers has come up before. 
and you know we don't want to redo everything except there are a lot of people now who are uh, concerned about that issue and we would like to participate and um, and make suggestions. Thank you. Oh, um, yes, Chuck. Um, I'd also like to point out that you could have just enough discussion to decide whether you would like the Budget and Finance Committee to take it up again. Um, and that is something you can do tonight, if you choose to, is to discuss it to that degree as to whether it is something you would want to address. Are you referring to referring this matter to the Budget and Finance Committee? I'm saying that that, I, that would be a way to respond to their desires in this. I mean, they've expressed an interest and it seems to me a fairly strong one, and I think that would be a good venue to, for them to um, express their thoughts on the matter more fully than they can during the board. Right, I, I would agree, and they, they're welcome to attend the budget and finance meetings and present this. I think that's a perfectly uh, valuable idea. I think if maybe we, if the, the finance manager and myself could meet with them first and, and discuss their thoughts and then we could put something together to either bring to the finance committee or to the uh, admin committee, depending. But I think we should kick it off maybe at staff level and, and meet and discuss and then get it to the, the appropriate committee. Sure. Um, uh, would that would that work for you too? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. With, uh, with and that and we can kind of vet a lot of this out. Uh, with the new laws that just went in fact Stephanie, you know, has spent a lot of time with the new laws right. and uh, she's very informed, and we can we can discuss and, and see we, what we can come up with and take to committee. So we'll, we'll reach out. Okay. So just to be clear, does that mean it would come back to the board before it goes to the committee? But you have a recommendation? Mm -hmm. Or we go to the committee? You probably to probably leave right there and go to committee. Um, just depending, I'm not sure I, I just what the make sure what it is we're we're trying to do and whether right. or not that's and that's what we'll do. Advisor. That's what Stephanie and I will do, and, and then go from there. We won't bring it back to the full board. We'll probably take it to the committee. Yes. Staff will bring it. And then they'll be able to discuss and write to the committee. Not unless the board would like to just go straight to committee, we can do that too. I'm looking at Gina. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, about the only thing we can do here discretion. is discuss whether to refer it to a committee. So yeah. um, It's our discretion whether to refer it to the committee, bring it to the board, or take it to staff and have them. Yes. Yeah. I think let staff head it out and see you know, what direction, and then we can take it from there. Either way, it'll wind up at board level or committee level or both. Well, I'll, I'll just say this. I think it's a great idea. And however administratively we figure it out, I support the idea of flushing this out. Because we may be able to work, you know, as a group of four of us and put together something to take to committee from their ideas and, and, and their I thoughts. And I'm, I'm concerned about this getting into sort of the substance yeah. or, you know, support for the various various issues. I mean, Referring it to the committee via staff, I think, is an appropriate thing to do in this context. Yeah. And that's about it. And I'd support yeah. that as well, because I know we've talked about this a number of times in the past, mm -hmm. and there's always been some thing that has been mm -hmm. an right. issue. So there might be some great new insight that you have, sure. and if that's the case, it would be really great for us to be able to work on it. And the finance manager has reached out to other organizations and stuff just recently and, and, and has some input that, that we can work together on as well. Scale has always been. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we refer this to the staff and you guys can talk to Rick and Stephanie. Rick? Okay. Any other uh, comments about items not on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to unfinished business. All right, um, your, your item 10A, uh, the board workshop for governance norms uh, and standard training uh, for the board of directors. At the December 5th, 2019 board meeting, the board directed staff to move forward um, with finding some training for, uh, for the board on communications, uh, governance, and, and on contentious issues. Uh, municipal resource group was contracted for a proposal to provide the board with training. Uh, MRG, as they go by, uh, works with as a local partner to provide uh, staffing uh, strategies, coaching for performance, uh, to name a few of their services. 
and one of their core services is being training, coaching staff, and development and board governance. Uh, MGR has submitted uh, a proposal for the scope of work uh, that is in your packet. Uh, the cost of uh, their service was not to exceed uh, $9,750. Uh, staff is looking for guidance um, and direction on this issue. Um, their part of their training would, or, and their coaching would be they would uh, individually meet with each individual board member, a telephone conference with each individual board member, the district manager, and district council, and then meet with the board at a, a, a group discussion at a board meeting or special board workshop, depending on how uh, the board moves, moves ahead. Okay. Yeah. Can I say something? Let the board discuss it. Are we ready to discuss it? Okay. At the time of the grand jury report, there had been a lot of problems between ratepayers and the board and the former district manager. I had high hopes uh, for Long Pico because we had become part of SLV June 1st, 2016. But I knew by December, September that we were in trouble. We were discounted. Uh, we were referred to as a small group of crazies. I became quite angry, if you want to know. I was, I could, I wasn't very nice. And I even got the sheriff called on me. Four sheriff cars came, were threatened with being arrested. Um, Rick Moran, at another meeting, was treated horribly by a board member. He tried to defend himself, and she threatened to throw him out. The former manager also called a ratepayer a liar and a thief. And the board president did nothing. The board president runs the meeting. And she could have gaveled the manager and uh, the board member, but she didn't. Uh, and I mean, the meeting just got so out of hand, they had to call, call it quits. And a few days later, I ran into Rick Moran at the store, and he was still visibly shaken by what had happened to him. Now, in this past year, I don't think we've, I mean, we've had people come here. They've been unhappy. Uh, they've been concerned. But they haven't been out of line, and neither has the board. I think things went well, maybe I'm dreaming, um, but it just seemed to me that's the way it was. Um, the current issue now, I think, it's, it's not between the public and the board, it's between the board itself. We have some issues. Um, and. I have an I I'm always concerned about the money. It's almost ten thousand dollars. I don't like to waste money. Um, I think it'd be well worth the money if it works. Um, but there are no guarantees, and I think the board as a group would have to work together. We'd have to make concessions. We'd have to give up on maybe any little uh, pet projects we have. And I'm asking myself, can, can I do that? Um, can I trust all the board members again? <coughs> I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what I can do. I'm the only woman on the board. I'm quite a bit older than everybody. I don't think that's an issue. Um, and I really want to support this, but I have some very big doubts about it working. That's it. You go, Cheryl. Get her out of here. <laughs> I got close. Yeah.
Okay. Anybody else on the board would like to share their thoughts? Uh, yes. Uh, first question I have is, yes, it is uh, nearly $10,000. And Rick, or whoever in the staff, Stephanie, um, where would this, if we decided to do this, where would this money come from? Do we have money in uh, human resources that, you know, this kind of qualifies as a human well, we, resource we issue? We would look and see where money would come from. We'll come back with that too. Okay. Where it come from. I, I'm, I'm sure we can we can find the money. It'll come from somewhere, obviously. Either but that or it's an X budget. It's a yeah. addition to the budget. It'll be an addition to the budget. It's a addition but, to the budget. Um, you know, we're we're mid year in the budget. I mean, we can have a good look at the budget and see okay. um, where we're at. I don't want to create a, find the money. Um, too much of a burden here, but I do want to fulfill. Uh, not only my desire to have a highly functioning board, but also to respond to the grand jury, which put a lot of work and effort into uh, making these recommendations. And their recommendation was that this board and senior staff and uh, committee members receive uh, training on contentious issues. And um, <clears throat> Lois relayed some of those contentious issues. And I think Lois is right that there's been a much better performance in that regard in um, these meetings. But unfortunately, we've had two board members who have resigned recently that there's some contentious issues around that as well. So we're, you know, conflict and contentious issues are part of life. And um, just as we are concerned with the infrastructure and the engineering of this thing, of the, our water district, there's some social engineering that needs to be manipulated as well. And um, that's my desire to see a, uh, to respond to the grand jury. There's a third party that came out there, they're the ones that said this, is I'm not making this stuff up, so it's not coming from me, it's coming from, you know, a legal arm of the government here. Um, so I support this. I've uh, worked uh, with Rick in trying to find somebody to do this. Uh, previous boards have uh, suggested that they would do this, but here we are, we're pushing forward, and uh, this is the best proposal that we have at this time. <coughs> um, our board policy has uh, many good um, suggestions on how we should act, our, our ethics and things. And uh, you know, uh, on our ethics, you know, we should emphasize the positive. We should not uh, attack people personally. We have the right to disagree, but not be disagreeable. Um, and we should continue board development. So those are things that are in our board policy, and those ideas are are great, and you know, we should have them in the back of our mind. But sometimes we need to get a little reminder on some real personal tools on doing that, some practice on doing that. And I think this is what this organization, this person that's going to be doing this can give us. So I fully support us doing this. And I have one other qu uh, little quibble with it is that I, I know she said by phone, and I wish that it would be FaceTime at least. Yeah, we can make those changes. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I just had one question. I don't know if anybody's here to be able to answer it or not. Um, but there was a line in the statement of work that I didn't understand. It says one of the things that this person will do will be to generate a shared vision slash plan for the district. Um, I, I'm not sure what that means. I'll get us a better clarification. I'm not sure what I mean by that either. Um, it may mean that they meant shared vision plan for the board? That's what I believe it is, is to get, you, you know, to work as a group and team building. And, yeah. Uh, and to express your, you know, your visions. And I, I think, you know, obviously you, you'll, most of you will have the same vision, just how to get there. So I'm, without her here, I will get a better clarification on that. And then um, part of at least what I had in mind was that this would also include particularly around any discussions of strategic plan, which seem to be the 
contentious issue um, overall is that there would also be an opportunity for the community to participate in this as well. Is that not part of what we have in here right now? This was, this was detailed more for the board to work together to for, for a team building exercise. The community obviously would have questions and answers and input, but it was mainly the board to work together. Now, you know, one of the things we'll see here is that as we get through this, if this board feels that they want to enter into another area of the strategic plan, if they feel comfortable in the way things are going and, and you like uh, the workshop, you may expand into well, different areas. I, I, I don't think, know. I, I think this from my point of view that that issue uh, <coughs> sort of brought into open a lot of discussions between um, the board, community staff, and all that, and it seemed like that was a great object lesson to be able to um, say, how would we go about getting to a resolution on that? Um, <coughs> and we might be able to so, use a strategic plan. Uh, not, not that we would have to do that as part of the process, right? but just, just to use in the back that of our mind, here's why we're doing it, yeah, and here's what we're trying to drive towards. Because at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, we all want to get to something that everybody feels good about. Mm -hmm. um. <clears throat> and you might be able to work through the strategic plan or at least the, the, an outline or something to where we don't need the next facilitator if, uh, for the strategic plan. That's yeah. it's a possibility. Sure, understand. Um, once this gets going, everybody's comfortable and, and working well together, um, and we get public input. I'm looking against our um, year-to-date budget. I guess it only goes through November, though. So it's worth, we're up about 200000 on revenue, if I'm right, and up about 100000 from last year's budget, or from last year's actual. So, mm -hmm. it's not a slam dunk. But I would support doing this, I think clarifying what the vision plan was about, because if it was her writing the strategic plan, I don't know. If no, that, 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 that is not the vision here. Yeah, that's right. not my intention. Yeah. No. That is not the intent. And then you will all You're be able to have... using the strategic plan as a tool, as a part of the no, process? I think, or? No, no, I think it was just that we had in the back of our mind that that, that was sort of the big thing that generated the... Catalyst. The, mm -hmm. the catalyst, exactly, of doing that. Though I... I do want to know where I can go to get training to charge two fifty an hour in my business. Sure, please. That's, that's a nice. That's a nice sum. Um, but in general, we need the training. Um, we committed to do it in the grand jury response, as I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. Um, it's not uncommon for boards to receive team building training. Yeah. yeah exactly. Most new boards, especially you know, this is complete new board. Right. Um, a lot of boards have team building and training and, and how to work together as a board. Well, there's got to be something more fun than this for team building. <laughs> so is there a way we can... Is that a contentious thing? <laughs> is there a way that we can prove it with clarification on the vision plan? Because right, I'll, I'll go back and talk with her and and you can prove this and then I'll make some changes with her. Yeah, I'd recommend that you approve it. Any, any other comments on, from any other? Well, I would just like to echo what has already been said, which is that uh, mm -hmm. in the last year we have seated a whole new board, and I don't believe that's happened in the past, at least that I can remember over the last six years, that we've had five new board members in a year's time. Right. And while I think we've made good progress in that last year, uh, as far as forming a team, uh, I think if you were to rate the the classical going from forming to storming to norming and performing. We're probably somewhere between storming and norming. And I think anything we can do to get us to the high performing area sooner is money well spent. So toward, to that end, I would like to make a motion that we accept the recommendation from the district manager in the memo dated January 9th regarding a board workshop. And authorize the district manager and to And authorize execute. the district manager to execute a contract. A, a, yeah, contract in the amount of 
$9,750. Council staff. So we're going to take the public comment. Uh, no, I think I can't get that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so we, have, need a, we would need a second, perhaps. I can second it. Can I Should we do that before we take the, the public can, comment? Can I offer an amendment? Still take it. We're, we're not voting on it yet. Can, can I offer an amendment? Before we go through a body. Sure. 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 So I, I would like to uh, amend that to say subject to clarification of the um, generate a shared vision plan for the district because I think that needs to be changed to board. I agree. So the vote would be yeah. first on the amendment. So Unless he name? accepts. I accept it. Okay. That's fine. Okay, do we want to do the vote now or hear from no, the no, no, no. Okay, thank you. The, the gentle people in the audience have an opportunity to comment on this item now. Feel free. Can I have a question? Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, it's not clear to me if it's just uh, board members or board members and committee, the volunteers, uh, members also. Because, Rick, it seems like when you say that grand jury included the committees, but the, the paperwork seems that it's about the board. I think this is, this is tailored to the board, the not the committee, uh, and the district manager and uh, district council. So, Elaine, the way I would answer that question is, I see this as a first step, mm -hmm. all right? I am committed to uh, go as far as the grand jury directed us to do, go, all right? And this as being the first step towards in, including uh, senior staff and uh, members of committees. Okay. Okay. And I'll, and I understand that that's not what this is being voted on right now, but that's my purpose is to create a first step that we can build on. And of course, any public meetings where we talk right. about this or workshops, it'll be a workshop. It'd be the public and committee members would be invited to attend. Thank you, Larry, for Felton. Um, Often when I've been involved in these kinds of activities, they are very expensive and there's often not a very good sense of how we're going to measure the effectiveness of the activity. So I'm wondering, have you thought about that? How would you literally, technically, measure the effectiveness of this kind of contentious issue training? Uh, I think that should be part of the contract, which, or at least it should be part of your plan, that you would um, define exactly what your measurable objectives are, and then the time frame for you to actually determine whether it was helpful. That would be important for knowing whether you needed to have a second workshop or something like that. The other thing I wanted to ask is, what are the specific deliverables in this contract? Is there a manual or something other than just notes, something other than just the experience? Seems like that could be really helpful so that you all could refer back to it. Oh yeah, how are we supposed to, you know, how did they recommend that we deal with somebody who's being belligerent or something like that? That's my suggestion. Thank you. If I may, any further? Yeah, respond. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I think that's a very good question, Larry. And if you look at the scope of work, uh, bullet okay. item number six, I think it speaks directly towards the, the measurable uh, outcomes in terms of outcomes and commitments. Okay. Now, that means some more detail, but I think that's what we're, we're speaking to there, is that there should be some commitments out of this from the board members toward an improvement of teamwork. And then, as far as scope of work, that all those bullets together, I think, uh, at least my estimation, uh, address what we're trying to accomplish. And if we can do all those things, I think we will have gotten our money's worth from the $10,000. Then there's also a follow-up in six weeks to check in on the commitment uh, challenge areas and next steps. So there is a revisit. And hopefully, I, I think it was the intent of the board to move right into the strategic plan as soon as we get this training. And so hopefully there's yes. some measurable success in moving through the strategic plan. Exactly. Yes. So, being the only woman on this board and the oldest person on this board, um, 
I always have a different thought. But I think it would be exciting to do this. It'd be kind of like going to the psychiatrist and getting them to <laughs> pick your brain. Um, but I'm still concerned. I'm, I'm still concerned about the results. And I, I don't know how to get rid of the concern. Uh, and it doesn't mean I won't vote for it, but I am concerned. Well, most, one of the things I'll say is um, this organization that we're dealing with here is uh, two of the people that we're in contact with are women. So um, women's voice will be part of this process. Well, I, I think hope. my voice has been heard a lot. Well, some Pretty other women loud. as well. Some <laughs> other women as well. I think because you have concerns, that's why we need to train. Yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't have concerns because I'm a woman. I'm just concerned. I want it to work, and and there's no guarantees. That's my concern. Jeff, um, yeah, Bob has mentioned one of these, which is the strategic plan, is something that's had uh, contention around it. So, on, on the fourth bullet item that says identify contentious issues and work towards collaborative resolution. I think you should be careful that anything that is discussed in that process that is a regular topic or a very apropos topic to the district is it's noticed in the agenda for that workshop that that subject matter is going to be discussed at that meeting. Yeah. So the public who, I mean, one is you're going to be working through a process to work together, but you might also be doing some decision making, it sounds like, or at least starting the process of this decision making. And if, there's, if you're discussing some aspect of the strategic plan and working towards that in that meeting, then you need to notice the public in that agenda that that's happening. Um, and as long as that happens, I, it could be a productive okay, meeting and you could proceed on those things. <coughs> but it might end up that you, I don't know how many actual factual matters you want to try to address in that meeting. And just think about it. I don't think we're going to play a game of the nuts and bolts more than just the process of how to get through the nuts and bolts yeah. of an item. I don't think we'll get into, you know, rewriting parts of the strategic plan or rewriting policy and turnoffs. Um, it'll, how we bring these to the board and as a group, you know, get that objective done, you know, as, as reasonably, as, as quickly as possible, but not talk about how we're going to do turn offs or how we're going to uh, change policy. That'd be my, that's, that's my understanding. You know. And Gina will be. That'd be something good to clarify with the presenter before it occurs because, right. yeah. And you will speak with her, you're, you're part of that process. So, and she's, I think she's a mayor of a past city. I mean, she may not be a mayor. Been mayor but yeah. She's, yeah, and so she's understandable in Brown Act, very much so. But, Chuck, if anything is discussed, Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. how we make a change. Did I? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm Mark Dolson. Uh, I'm not sure that more public comment will be helpful here, but I, I'm just officially confused. I want to ask. So I've had a lot of uh, positive experiences with these kinds of trainings and also some negative ones, so I can appreciate Lois's concern and open question about how, how do we know or what reason do we have to believe this will work as well as we hope it will. And it's just a little unclear to me from the amount of information that's been provided how much you do know right now. Would it just be helpful if you could say, is, is this going to be a, like an off-site with just the board? Is it going to be all face-to-face, -face, including with the facilitator? Uh, How is it going to be run? And what, um, what sort of testimonials or, or you know, prior results were you able to learn about that motivated this choice? Well, I just know from talking to the consultant that uh, their, their, their plan is, is to first talk to either face-to-face -face or by phone individually with each board of directors and district council and myself and then meet in as a workshop in a public meeting with audience and the full board uh, and then she'll put on her presentation or their workshop and work with from her findings from the individual meetings that's about as much as i know of the process of how that's going to go um, it'll all be the the meetings with the board will all be done at an open session meeting that we know behind the doors meeting with the board the full board I have. Yeah. Um, 
to me, it seems like we shouldn't be talking about specific things like the strategic plan or or the board policy manual or whatever that we're we need to be talking about how we're going to work better together what can we do to ease any tensions there that, that we have i i just think if we if we start talking a strategic plan then we're off track just Uh, do we have any other comments? Uh, anybody in the audience? No. So we had a did we had a, we had a, a motion, motion and, a and, second. and we had a second and an amendment and, and an amendment, but didn't he accepted it right? So yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have to re-second. Yes. It's already been seconded. Yeah. You would have to re-second it. Yeah. Do I need to say I second it again? Yes. 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 Is there yes, second? you do. No, okay. Yes. I'll second it again. Okay. Thank you. All right. Holly, you can call the roll. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. President Swan? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Super. Moving on to new business. Okay, item Maestro. Uh, item 11A, uh, public uh, committee members uh, for 2020. Um, the district has uh, advertised and uh, as per board policy manual, uh, committee appointments uh, will be reviewed by the full board at a board meeting in December or uh, as soon after. The district has advertised uh, for committees uh, and applications have been received for the district's current five standing committees. The administration committees has uh, currently two board members and three public members. The budget and finance committee, two board members and two public members. The engineering committee has two board members and three public members. And the environmental committee has two board members and three public members. And the Lampico Assessment District Oversight Committee has four public members. Um, in your packet, and I do believe the district secretary uh, handed out um, a list of uh, people that have applied. In your packet, you also have the applications. And I think um, the district secretary's uh, list here is pretty self-explanatory. We have people that have put in their first choice and second choices, um, and that's listed in here. And with that, I'll turn it back over to uh, the board for questions. And you do probably have some of the uh, applicants here to give them some background. Uh, just Holly? Um, may I speak? I just wanted to mention that um, there, I did leave for the board, and there's also a packet over here with an additional um, application that the gentleman had said he was going to re-up for his um, committee, but for vacation reasons or whatever, the one came in late. But he has been on a committee. He's he was serving up until the 31st of December on the committee and um, on the environmental committee, and so he got his application in a little bit late, but he said we would accept it. Is he on? Is yes, he's on, on this sheet. That oh, I okay. Have. Okay. okay. Are any of the, uh, somebody was here, but are any of the other hands, how many people are here that have applied? Great. Let's give you all an opportunity to speak, introduce yourselves, um, and just briefly give us a little background on why you want to do this, I guess. A little overview of what you think would be important to know about yourself. If you're not on a computer, or if you're on a computer. What's yours? I'll read that along with your bit. Well, I'm a research scientist with UC Santa Cruz and have been a research scientist for my full career, about 40 years with the University of California. Um, I've done a lot of research in the San Lorenzo River drainage, the main stem of the river as well as tributaries, and have been studying effects primarily of sediment and nutrients on the life of the river, mostly um, 
Uh, I have been using aquatic insects and other invertebrates as water quality indicators as per the practice of the, um, the state of California and indeed much of the nation using these organisms as water quality indicators, but also with fish. And I'm working with um, the research group at the Institute of Marine Sciences and the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at UCSC that has both the faculty and grad students involved with research um, uh, in various watersheds of the area, and in particular um, the health of the Salmons, including steelhead. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any, but that's my background. Thank you. What is your name? Dave Herbst. And I'd just like to say, uh, Dave and I have talked in the past and have met socially, and uh, you obviously heard his qualifications, so technically he has got all the qualifications that would be necessary to be on an environmental committee, but he is also a uh, caring and respectful person and who wants to contribute to this community. So uh, another big part of being involved in public service. Great. And we had, or Elaine, why don't you go ahead and uh, take care of the front row. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I served already for a year on the Environmental Committee, and I've learned a lot. Um, and I really appreciated your accepting my application last year and being so patient with me um, and respectful of some of my views that were a little different. And uh, my priorities are uh, protection of the watershed and, uh, and our infrastructure, which needs a lot of help, and having enough revenues for our infrastructure. Um, I, I think that most of you know what my background is. I'm, just, I'm a retired nurse midwife. Thank you. And in the back row, there was someone, yes. Gail David Felton. Um, I was appointed to the engineering committee at the very end of last year, and so I only actually made it to uh, one meeting, but I've reapplied. Um, I recently retired a week ago, um, after finishing 40 years as a professor of geology at Stanford, and so I'm looking forward to having more time uh, to spend involved with the water district. Um, my background is, as I said, in geology. Actually, my specialty is volcanoes, so it's a little bit far away from water and landslides and some of the other issues that we have here. But I, uh, I have a strong background in sort of general geology, which I hope to bring to bear on issues of the groundwater modeling and some of the other um, geotechnical issues that we have to face. And I've already been out in the field with Darren and James to take a look at one of those looming geotechnical problems in the uh, slide that we the land slide. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, um, I am Dave Ladd. Um, new to the valley, been in Fulton about 30 years. So, just get my feet wet. It feels that way sometimes. Um, I, I'm not even going to tell you what my professional credentials are <laughs> next to these folks, but uh, I'm interested. I've been a rate payer since day one, and um, I am on a board right now. I'm currently uh, chairman of the board of the Felton Fire Department. Um, served um, in that department for ten, about 10 years, and then moved on to the board. Um, and I'm just, you know, the regular guy that um, is interested and wants to be involved, so... Maybe a little common sense from the bottom uh, might help one of these committees. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I wasn't here at the meeting last year when this was resolved with the committees uh, in this particular year, but do we have the directors that are part of these committees review individual, I mean, make their suggestions with regards to their particular committees? And does that have to be voted on the chance? We, we haven't done that in the past. No. Um, typically it's been a board, collective board action. Um, just to refresh on the policy, we, the policy allows us to have any number of public um, members that we wish to have as a board. I think last year the maximum we went to was five. 
but not every committee was fine. Um, and we, when we're selecting the committee members, we also set the uh, membership number in the same motion. Is there concern uh, that we, in the past year, from experience, have we learned any issues resolved around the size of the committees and being able to have a quorum? Um, at least the two committees I was on, personally, I found the larger committee size to be very helpful. I think we got a broader diversity of opinion from the community, and um, I'd like to, I mean, I thought that was really a good thing. Um, I don't believe we had any uh, quorum issues. In fact, I think the only membership issue is I got a meeting location confused one time and so I was a little late because I went to the wrong place. Um, but other than that, I think it's been um, a very positive experience, yeah. for at least for the two committees I was on. Yeah. Holly? May I mention one other thing? Um, there is uh, a committee, uh, an applicant here, Mr. <coughs> Land, that also applied for the public advisory um, committee facilities. So um, we didn't get very many applications for that. <laughs> okay. But we do have five people so far for the... Um, yes, the, there's at yeah. least five. Right. And he would be the sixth? If no, he would be one of the five. Okay, one of the five. All right. Okay. But that's not a standing committee, right? It's not a standing no, committee, but I just... Not. So you should be able to be on there. If, if you wanted to do Sorry. that. Yes. Yes. But I was just mentioning that if you didn't want to make it a larger committee, that... Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. All right. Probably something you want to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you apply for both. That's huh? true. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Right. So uh, in that regard, and I wasn't here for the committee assignments last year uh, either, um, but I know it was uh, part of uh, the discussion that you wanted to encourage community involvement and to the degree that we have this large amount of people that want to be involved and highly uh, skilled people and uh, I'm sure their devotion is matched by their skill. Um, so I, you know, uh, hopefully uh, Lou has taught, we've been on the environmental committee together and um, I may end up being the chairperson of that committee and um, if all the applicants are approved there would be six members on that, two board members and four citizen members and uh, I, I'm number one, yeah, well, uh, however the numbers are, uh, I have no problem with the more people being on there. Uh, I'm uh, encouraged by people wanting to be on the environmental committee. Yeah, well, it certainly looks popular from this uh, spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. bring it donuts. Yeah. There's four people that it's yeah. their first choice. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, so that'd be six. Six. Yeah. And, yeah. and in that regard, yeah. where's the fifth? There's five. There's one, two. There's five that four. Uh, one, are the first two, choice. Three, four. There's no. four that are asking for the first time on the. Uh, uh, their first choice on the environmental committee. There's five. Oh, I, I don't have John, the old list. Maybe John, stuff, yeah, okay, the old list. I have the old list. We have the old list. Oh, oh we do. Oh, I, it was on your desk there. Yeah, you've you got to get to the um, old list. So well, I, was, I, I left it in the other room. I wanted to mention also yeah. that I don't know this as a fact, but I was told earlier today that perhaps Mr. Rhodes was planning to withdraw his application. Yes, so that's uh, personal communication that I had with him, and um, Michael Rhodes, uh, he's a neighbor, <clears> and um, he said he has uh, uh, other commitment. He's working, and that's off the list. The kind of catch twenty two that we're in. So then you back to four. Yeah, and then I do. Then you have to expand the, that committee one more because you've only yeah. gotten three. The policy allows it. If you wanted to accept all four. Yes. Once. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay, so why is budget and finance so popular? Stephanie, any thoughts on that? <laughs> not everyone's a numbers person. I guess not. She yeah. does that kind well, of a job. Well, but Lois really likes the numbers. <laughs> well, there, there is the um, possibility, and, and, and the board has done this in the past. In fact, that's what, what happened with me one time. That if you don't get selected for your number one choice, 
even if you didn't put down another committee as your number two <laughs> or three, you could still say, hey, I'm interested in that committee and, and be considered for that committee. Yeah, but aren't we going to give everybody who's number one choice? Well, there are, we're gonna let them. there are two number twos and one number three on the environmental committee. Yeah, but there have ones elsewhere. Well, for instance, with um, Ms. Bounds, her number two is the Environmental Committee, but she's already um, cur was currently serving on the Admin Committee, so she could right. not. She couldn't do that. She couldn't do. She, she couldn't do take that. that. Take on another committee. Yeah. But if we gave everybody their number one choice, then we're all in the, we're all the parameters there. of what we want. Yeah. So we'd be short one on the admin, right? Well, we just make it four, and that's all. Again, yeah. you can no, no, I'm just saying we just have to change the numbers yeah. of the yeah. committees, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The admin's a happen place. So. Yeah. And if I get much more happen in budget and finance, yeah. uh, just say one other thing to um, the prospective board uh, committee members out there is um, it was an eye opening experience when I first did this on the environmental committee uh, four or five years ago. Uh, the one thing I would recommend is read the board policy. Just get an idea of what the kind of duties and responsibilities are and have some background in just understanding that. Read the board policy. And then for people that are new, we also need to do Brown Act training and all that sort of thing. I think you were going about to say that, right? So. Well, and I was going to start with a more logistical point, which is that uh, where you have an even number on the committee, keep in mind that a quorum is yeah. half plus one. Yeah. So that may not matter so much for, you know, if example engineering has six members, mm -hmm. a quorum is going to be four or yeah. six. That may not be yeah. difficult, but for admin, if you've got uh, a committee of four, then a quorum is three of the four, that may be a little more difficult. Um, so you, you know, Melissa and Andy have been pretty consistent attendees. I think Melissa missed one and Andy missed one, something like that. So it's, it hasn't been as big an issue. Yeah. And they haven't there's, both missed at the same time. There's mostly always been four people. Yeah. So, we've been doing okay. I mean, I really do say, I think the committee members have been incredibly diligent in their participation, flexing their schedules since we're having these meetings during the day. It is greatly appreciated that people do that. <coughs> Well, um, I just want some clarification. So, uh, Mr. Land, who also applied for the other the public advisory committee, are you going to uh, appoint him to this committee to be a sixth member? Mr. Land? Or would, he, would you think he would be able to give a choice? You're talking about to the engineering committee? Yes, the engineering committee. So, if he's on that, then that gives us. Oh, yeah, he, he can serve both. He can do both. But that would be a six person a, committee then. If he didn't do both, if he just did the other one, yeah, then it would be a 5 It doesn't seem to make a difference how many they have on the committee, so we have a six person for engineering. I think it's, yeah. I think it's Plus, so, I mean, you guys are okay with it. I wholeheartedly uh, endorse the incumbents that have reapplied. So for those asterisks, as far as I'm concerned, they're on. Uh, and for the new people, for both the engineering and the environmental, you know, noting that Mr. Rhodes has, has probably backed out. I acknowledge that it's going to increase the size of those committees, but as Bob said, I think the more the better. I mean, if you look at the people that have already served, they've done great things, in my opinion. And the people that are projected to serve have qualities that match, not exceed the, the people that we already got. So I'm not worried about the size of the committee as much as I am that we're getting good people to help us move forward. And you'll have a great experience with David Lyle. Then. I think we ought to pick them all. Okay, so thank you. With, well, with, and uh, I agree. You, yeah. Okay. I'll make sure that. So what? What? Uh, what the board is basically the consensus is that we're going to give. Uh, just the recommend public comment before going too much further in right. the discussion. But oh, basically, okay. number ones. Yeah, yeah. Number gotcha. ones. Yeah. In. Public comment. Anybody? Well, I, I like the idea of having the larger committees, and everyone seems to have such good qualifications. I think that would be great. Any other public comment, Chuck? 
I agree with them. <laughs> I think it'd be good to have. Thanks for the rubber stamp, Chuck. <laughs> Anybody else? Sure. That's good. Okay. So, so what we're hearing then, it sounds like everybody's number one choice and committee that they're requesting is we're in favor of approving that and expanding or reducing the size of any committee accordingly to meet these to meet that statement. Does that sound fair? So the budget and finance is only going to have one public member. But he's a strong one, man. Steve doesn't. Yeah, yeah. he's very fantastic. Good. <clears throat> would you would it, just for the record? Um, how about I read each committee and the number and the names, and then somebody could move for that? Okay. Does that yes, work? That sure. Just sure. to make sure yeah. it's all. I'm not going to turn down the recommendation of our legal counsel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, based on the consensus that you were identifying, President Swan, uh, the proposal is that the administrative committee will. Um, consist of a total of four members, two public members, Ben Kern and Bounds. Uh, the Budget and Finance Committee will have a total of three members. That's uh, one public member, uh, and I apologize for uh, Arch my Archizel. Okay, thank you. Engineering Committee will have a total of six members with four public members, uh, Land, Lad, Mahood, and Smoley. Environmental Committee will have a total of six members, four public members, Fresco, Herbst, O'Connor, and Sup. And Laddock will have a total of four uh, members, that's all public members, Hagen, Labalbo, Lowen, and Norton. I make a motion that we accept what our legal counsel just read. I'll second that. Okay. Holly? All right. Roll the dice. Well, well, one question? Or, or we, Sorry, have Mr. we talked Chance. about. Mr. Chan. I'm Mr. Chan. Yeah. No, go ahead. Or, or is the, the choice of the chairman of the committees at, at question? We usually do that in the first meeting. You do that in the first meeting, and Correct. it's got to be a board member. So it's got to be. I mean, board. basically, okay. you, yeah. you yeah. and uh, Rick get the arm wrestle, and whoever loses, um, you know, <laughs> gets the committee. Oh my God! <laughs> Are we going to decide when we're having those? First as soon meetings? as we get this nice. vote out of the way, then we're going to talk about we need to set okay. at least the first meeting so yes. we can okay. get things rolling. Because Director Ferris. Aye. Director Moran. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. President Swan. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. So now exactly figuring out the times for that first right. meeting. For your first meeting because yes. we didn't have quorum so we didn't schedule uh, the first meeting in January. So we would like to get each of these meetings You want to do that scheduled. now? Yeah, I would like to. If we have a problem with that, Jim? Can we schedule uh, the first meeting now? Um, I was going to say I can actually um, pull, the, now that I know who the members are, do it, do it. I can pull all the members and find out for each individual meeting when they want to be able to do that. That might take care of this. Could, but could, could we just kind of keep the same days of the week? Well, probably. It's something that you decide on the first meeting of a committee. I believe that the admin and budget finance can stay the same for the most part. Yeah. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But we can, uh, we, you can pull them, everybody, just to make sure. So well, it's, except that that day's already gone by for this month, so we need to choose yeah. a day for yeah. this month yeah. only. This oh, yeah. Just yeah. We're just not doing the whole time. That's How about next week? <laughs> <laughs> to answer the question, yes, you can do that here. Yes. Yeah. Um, I am regrettably unavailable um, all next week until Thursday night. Okay. We can do it Friday. For your particular committee, which is? From yeah, but you can't do both committees Friday, can you? Well, I mean, I could, as long as they were um, a nice-sized agenda. I'm off there. I don't have to do that. For which one? I'm 
Stephanie or any of budget without Stephanie, obviously. Could yeah, we it? need budget stuff to be doing. We can do the next week. How about... That's good fun. How about... Um, let me see that thing. Um, Tuesday the 21st. Yeah, how about Tuesday the 21st or Tuesday the... Next week? Mm -hmm. Or Tuesday the 14th? Bob said he's not, he's only available on Friday. Of right, but I mean, well, I guess for budget and finance, it takes two people You'll have to, to have a quorum. You have to make sure that Steve's available. Yeah, we'd have to make sure of that. Just trying to get your budget going. Okay. Well, we can do it the week after, the week of the 20th. 20th is the holiday. Or so the week of the 20th. Oh, okay. Um, so... Are you going to be around on the 21st? Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm pretty sure any of those other days, any of those days, are not following week work for me. Can we do the 22nd? Tuesday's kind of a bad morning for me. So I can do the 22nd. Wednesday's morning. fine. Wednesday's fine. Okay. Which day? I'll Wednesday. have to check with... Uh, but is it... Isn't it normally <coughs> Tuesday we have budget and finance? But this is a this special is the first meeting. Yeah. meeting. What so time are you talking on? Is it Wednesday the 22nd you're talking? Yeah. Yes. What time? 9.15. Okay, because we've got a lunch. That was a trick question, uh, Rick. I, I remember. No, I mean, we, we just have, we have something in this room. Yeah, that's that's new, so. um, yeah. And uh, we also have um, a meeting in the morning that... Um, Safety yeah, 9.15 would be fine, though. Yeah, that's, the room is fine at 9.15. Do we have an agenda meeting for Santa Margarita? Something? Well, I was supposed to ask you, and I, there wasn't very much on it, so I'll talk to you about it. Okay. There isn't there isn't anything on the agenda, so... Rather than trying to have this tonight, meeting, then. Shall, shall I just pull everybody yes. that's on the committees? Yeah. Please. Oh, yes. yeah. I think that's a great idea and very efficient. Thank you. I think you even have a tool to do that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you have, you have everybody's contact information? I do. Okay. Which is I, very I just efficient want to, about the tool. Yep. You're subject to Holly's little poll here for at least that first meeting? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, we want to do that this month. Yes. Okay. Sounds like it. Yeah. Well, I like since most of the people from the engineering committee are here, do you want to do at least two? There's only one person you'd have to call, and that's Mark. Gail, are you okay with uh, next, thir next Thursday at 2? We usually do it Thursday at 2, but not no, no, Gail, first. You're retired now, so you can't use that on busy. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's good because we've got the, the other the groundwater thing. Same. Mm -hmm. right, so. Yeah, that Okay. And Rick and I will be you, available next Thursday at yeah, yes. next Thursday. Two. Thursday, the day of the board meeting. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At two o'clock. Yeah. Right. Is that, is that okay, Darren? I have I have a presentation on the Bear Creek uh, alternatives analysis from one thirty to three. Consultants kind of been scheduled for about. We don't want them not to be scheduled because we have to have Darren there. Mm. We'll have about later. Just move it. Howdy. Yeah. yeah. You, you well, so the, you run into I won't be there then. Are the meetings always held at a regular time, or will you? Yes, be we will be setting the regular we'll time for the, the meetings at the first meeting of the committee. Not your first meeting, okay. Uh -huh, that's when it's first, first three o'clock. Okay. Okay. When I know it's back to back, but uh, next Tuesday, next Thursday at three o'clock instead of two o'clock. I mean, I'm available and it yeah, is Kale. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. Okay. We'll just let. Oh, you're going to poll for all the committees, right? Yes. So we'll move on from right. this you know, date calendar contest. Well, you're never going to get everybody. That's the problem with some of these committees. And we'll move on to the next item of the business, item 11B. All right, uh, that's a discussion of possible action related to the design of the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline Replacement Project. The district engineer is here and will give you that presentation. On November 15, 2019, Salmon Valley Water District advertised a request for proposal for consulting services for the design of the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline Replacement Project. 
At 3 p.m. on December 20th, three proposals were received. The following firm submitted proposals. MNS Engineers Incorporated, MME Civil Engineers, and Fetus and Fetus Engineering Incorporated. District staff carefully reviewed the three proposals and determined based on the proposals and phone conversations with some of the engineering firms that the proposal from Freedus and Freedus Engineering and Planning Consultants Incorporated in the amount of $54,975 was the top ranked proposal. Freedus and Freedus Engineering and Planning Consultants Inc. submitted a proposal which included the lowest fee, clear understanding of the project issues and proposed completion of the design within the time frame set forth in the RFP. It is the recommendation that the Board of Directors find Fetus and Fetus Engineering and Planning Consultants Incorporated to be the top ranked firm and award the consultant contract signed for the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline Replacement Project to Fetus and Fetus in the amount of $54,975. Do you have any questions? I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you. Just a question. I forget. Do we normally go to the audience for comment before the board comments? Board first. Board first in the audience? Mm -hmm. Then back to the board? No, it is at your discretion. Well, well, I mean, what, what, historically, what have we been doing? Because historically, it's been board and audience, but it's your discretion. Yeah, well, let yeah. me just offer a clarification on this because it, the Brown Act requires that the public comment period occur before the end of board discussion. So, um, it, it creates a little bit of complexity because you don't want to have the entire board discussion completed before you go out to the public. So right. it usually makes sense to have sort of quick comments, go out to the public, and then resume the board discussion. Uh, and, and, uh, and then for some questions. issues, you can even go back out to the uh, yeah, public if you, you wish. It's, again, your discretion. Okay, we'll just keep it simple. We'll just go to the public first, and then we'll come to the board. So the public that has anything to comment or say about this selection of this engineering firm. Freitas. Freitas. Yeah, the recommended firm of, or the recommended uh, Freitas and Freitas. Please share your thoughts. You're invited to share your thoughts. Does anybody have anything? Uh, Chuck? Go I'll ahead. share my thoughts about the process of doing this. I think the idea of polling the board first okay, is a really good idea. Okay, and uh, it gives the public something to respond to, but not so much as it I mean, if you want to, the other way is that the public doesn't really know what the discussion is about and has used up their comment time. So. Oh, okay. So the public may not have read the board packet, is what we're saying. So we can leverage off of what we have to say. So we'll assume there's nothing for now and open it up to the board for comment. Yes. So um, this is a really big difference in numbers. And why I like to see that, it also sets off just my normal CFO of, is this too good to be true? Um, the, 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 the statement in their, in their statement of work is, our preliminary fee estimate for the work is 54,975. And when I see preliminary and estimate, it's like, well, is this a firm fixed price? Or is this a, we're going to get a lot of change orders as things go along, and you know, we might see an increase in the fee. You know, I've read the proposal, I've called up and talked to my previous, uh, we've gone over a number of different issues, had to do with design, had to do with consultation uh, with the uh, committing agencies, Caltrans, chef of the county, etc. Uh, he seems to be, you know, have, have everything included in the proposal that we asked to be included in the proposal. Um, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you if, if something's going to come up that might lead to a change order, but it would have to be a substantial change order to get anywhere close to the second proposal. Obviously, it's my job to keep any change orders or increases in the price of the work to an absolute minimum. But um, have we done business with them before? I think the district has just done business yeah, with them. Yeah. We've used Mike quite a few. <coughs> but I've never worked with them before. Yeah, I've, 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 I've worked directly with him. They were a small shop, mom and pop, husband and wife type shop. They don't have the overhead for one. He, he's qualified. It's a straightforward project. Um, he hasn't had a tendency to come in with a lot of change orders for that in the past. 
Um, he typically is a much lower receiver than he was bidding. It was pretty much a given. Um, you know, he's Darren will have to be on top of him as any other contractor, but he'll put out the work. And there, there's been some issues in the past with him, but was, there's minor issues <coughs> with every contractor and, uh, and that. Um, uh, he did the uh, Southern District for Lompico. He tentatively comes in very low on his engineer estimates. He seems to be always low on his engineer estimates. But it's not a big deal here. Um, and he, <coughs> there's no reason not to, to use him. And he pretty much stick to his price. Okay. I think it's worth noting that we did have some discussion about this at the engineering committee meeting, knowing there was such a wide variance between the three quotes. And I think Darren did an exceptional job of doing his diligence to make sure that that lowest quote was able to do the job and not going to, you know, good news. get the job and then ask for more. I know. So one thing I noticed about him, sometimes he doesn't meet deadlines. Um, is there any significant deadlines in this situation? Well, one of the things was, you know, as part of the, or during, you know, while the, uh, the RFP was out being circulated, I got a call from Mike, and uh, he expressed a concern. I think originally there were, no, before I put the RFP out, um, I, I called up and talked to some of the guys about their ability to, to, to do it. He, he wanted more time. Uh, normally, this is a relatively small design project. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't give in, in the um, RFP. We allowed him till September to complete the design, and that allowed you know a little firm like Freitas and Freitas to um, actually submit a proposal because of the amount of the, the time that he had to work it into his overall workload. Yeah. Uh, with the amount of time that we've given in this. RFP, I don't expect there to be any problems. You know, I'll stay on them and you know make sure that we move through and you know do the preliminary design and you know, do that sort of stuff. If this was a short, you know, like like the uh, 2019 pipeline project that we awarded to, you know, it has to be a bigger firm. I mean, it was a really a lot of work in a relatively short period of time. You really have to have a, a, a larger shop in order to put the resources on it to complete it in a short time. <coughs> this is a small amount of work and a long. So I, don't, I don't expect any over. Um, over. Thank you. Yeah. Good news. So I have uh, maybe two questions. So if uh, we take his uh, proposal here for the consultation, does he would he end up doing the work later on? Could he possibly do that? He's not a contractor. He's not a contractor. Okay. Just an engineer. Yeah. Right. Um, I remember this uh, this picture here because in the uh, eighty nine earthquake, this was nothing but pilings. Re, re, uh, Highway 1 was totally rewilded, routed because of this. Um, but I like these flexible joints, and um, I'm thinking the more the better. Uh, so there's one in the front, one you know, on both ends. Is you know, just as an engineering question, would a third one in the middle be you know what what's the advantage disadvantage? So, so what you do when you're designing for these, you, you take a look at the joint and the maximum flexibility that you have in the joint, maximum mm -hmm. movement. And you so if the if you anticipate that the whole bridge is going to potentially move in in a second earthquake a foot, and you have a foot on one side and a foot on the other side, you've got two foot of play. The bridge is only expected to move a foot. You're, mm -hmm. you're okay. I mean, putting another one in, you could do it, but you'd be it, it's not the most cost effective way to do your design. So so that you know that's how it's, we would approach it. Sometimes I think in double redundancies and you know so. But I, I just wanted a technical answer. The more of those joints, the higher the price. Yeah. Much higher, for sure. And they're very expensive. Because the, yeah, they're nice. Yeah, yeah they're flexible. The areas of movement right. are, at, as you enter the bridge and leave, just from vehicles. There's yeah. a lot of bridges will, will vibrate yeah. and move. Yeah, no more bridges, And sure. uh, just from vehicle traffic. So you yeah. put them at you know, both ends and it isolates the middle. Yeah. And those ball joint, flexible ball joint, ball joints are expensive. Yeah. You'd be surprised how expensive they are. Back to the public. Anybody? 
Go once, twice you're gone. Okay. So back to the board. A motion and, uh, to authorize the district manager to execute. I'll make a motion that the district manager we accept Freitas and Freitas's offer. And can I just, can you motion, um, Director Henry, uh, specifically authorize the district manager <coughs> to execute, what? Uh, authorize the district manager to execute a contract with Freitas and Freitas? Oh, okay. Could the district manager please? This needs to be part of your motion. Authorize me to execute. Authorize you to get a contract for the free this and free. In the amount of fifty-four thousand nine seventy-five. Very good. I'll second that. <laughs> it's a group effort. You call the roll. All right, Director Ferris. Aye. Director Moran. Yes. Director Ferris? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. And Director Henry? Yes. All right, let's move on. Item 11B. 11 11 of, oh, no, no, sorry, that was 11B. Yeah. C. 11C is a, purchase. Uh, the award bid of uh, purchase of new district vehicles. The current 2019 20 fiscal year budget provides for the purchase of oh. four district vehicles. With a total budget of $143,000. Uh, in November 2019, uh, staff uh, mailed notice of money bids to 15 California um, automotive dealerships in an effort to execute uh, formal bidding procedures for the purchase. Of, uh, we decided to only go out for three vehicles as we were redetermined that one of the vehicles could be reassigned and we could get uh, a longer life. Uh, staff contacted the 15 uh, vehicle dealerships, Southern and uh, Northern California, we received one bid, uh, and that bid was uh, one week late uh, from North Bay Ford of Santa Cruz, totaling $125,405, with a total budget for the three vehicles of $115,000, and the total budget for the vehicle replacement is $143,000, a little confusing. Uh, we've never been able to get a lot of bids for vehicles, even so we went out and contacted vendors We try to contact as many as possible. They all say they'd like to bid, they take and we never hear from. North Bay Ford is for the last couple of years and have uh, been uh, the only bidder that we have received. In the past, we've uh, either taken North Bay Ford's bid or the board has authorized staff to, to go out and negotiate. Seems North Bay Ford did submit a, a sealed bid a week late. Um, I probably refer to Gina, but um, I'd recommend that we take that bid because we can't get any bid instead of go out and try and negotiate. We do need the vehicles. Um, we've never had a good success on purchasing vehicles. Dealers just don't like doing it. What is the issue? They don't like. They don't like bidding. They don't have. You know, the vehicles. We have our bid spec doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that these packages come with that you go and purchase. So they have special order. Most of these are special order vehicles. Special order. special order, they don't like special order. They want you to come in, well I got this one right here, I'll even give it to you cheaper with the chrome rims and the all the uh, like, you know, all bells and whistles that just don't go over well um, in the service area for staff to drive around in, they're not needed. Um, so it's just a, it's a, they like to sell what's on the floor and go. Very few of them will actually do the do the work to write up a bid and then write up the order. Is, are you saying that they would sell something off the floor for the same price or cheaper? Or Sometimes cheaper, but then it's stacked with bells and whistles and you get complaints <coughs> of people maintenance or issues or something. See those and it just causes us nothing but issues. That and the motors for the windows and stuff like that are maintenance trucks yeah. and our water quality trucks have a lot of in and out rain on the doors. Carpet, in and out. they're all carpeted <laughs> instead of rubber mats. You know, we have rubber mats, carpet just doesn't work in our vehicles. Right. So upholstery, we go with a, with a leather upholstery uh, or a, a vinyl and they come with you know soft carpeted upholstery and whatever, they don't hold up in the trucks. Rain gear soaks these, these seats. So they don't really fill <coughs> our needs. Um, North Bay Ford does order them. And, and well, and it's like a 90 day wait. It's, uh, it takes a long time to get the vehicles. Is there, is there any way to join up with other districts to 
like but they, they have the same the problems bid. there are state bids and we've used state bids in the past but when you get all said and done then there's also a fee to use the state bid a percentage and then it comes in more than we can just go out and and purchase. Well, I'm thinking of if we just join together with SoCal and yeah, Santa difficult. Cruz and difficult Scott Valley do. and say, hey, can we all purchase our Because they have together? the same issues and they go right out and buy from Ford. Like Coquel Creek goes down and buys off a lot or goes and just orders from Ford. I don't think they even go to bid anymore. Mm -hmm. For that, passenger type trucks. The larger size dump, like dump trucks and so forth, you can pretty much still get those ordered and there's still a, uh, an interest if most of those are our order. I mean, sometimes the Sometimes the issue is you got to make the problem bigger in order to right. solve it, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if it's just not big enough for them, then... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the three trucks is... Three vehicles is pretty good. You yeah. would think you would get... Three for the price of four. Uh, you know, you would think you... <laughs> you think you would get uh, some interest. Well, here, because the response was a week late, you, you wouldn't have to accept it. And really, you're operating under an exception from the competitive bidding requirements anyway here where you've got one bid a week late and don't have anything to compare it to. So right. I think it's really up to you know you and the board whether you think it um, <clears throat> it makes sense and you can get the best deal taking the bid versus negotiating. Right. Um, maybe a thought that we would authorize an expenditure up of that price and we could negotiate a cheaper price or did not take their bid. So uh, the question, I, first of all, I appreciate you buying these bare bones kinds of vehicles, you know. Um, and I got a ride one time with James and I went to push the window button. Hey, James, there's no window button. I had to hand crank it, uh, which is what I have in my little truck. So I, and I appreciate that. And you know, if you pay $1,200 to get to replace that motor, um, I see why you get the bare bones. Um, did we? Can we trade in what we have? We do. We do. Well, for, do we get one of the? They they actually usually when we're done with them, there's they, not much left of them. They ain't tradable. But <laughs> Ford seemed to they give us a buyback, a buyback, a pretty good price on buyback. So the price still may go down according to. Yeah. Uh, and what would you guess ballpark and number? Well, last right? year total we got rid of two trucks for them for and one was fifteen hundred, the other one was a thousand bucks. Okay, so there's still some pretty good money for those trucks. Okay. Yeah, the Ford Ranger that they bought back, the bed was almost completely ripped off the truck. Mm -hmm. Where it's going around these corners on these roads and it just <laughs> yeah. rips the side of the bed. So. Plus you carry a I think they set up with that wait. state program for, but they yeah. get 700 bucks or something like that. One of those things. So. Yeah, donate them to KQED. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. Well, yeah, they do do a buyback, so that's okay. what we've been. We've been noticed that we got a better price with them with the buyback than trying to sell them ourselves and putting all the effort and time yeah. into yeah. trying to sell them ourselves and surplus ourselves. It's just easier to, and we're getting more money. So, Plus you don't have liability. Right. Mm -hmm. no. Rick, I appreciate you um, willing to take three instead of four, but what's your Thinking in terms, what makes you believe that you can you can get another year out of that? Well, let James answer that because he's we're almost yeah. through the year and it's running pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess if it, so, it, I mean, it, I thought you were, thought you were going to say we shifted it to a lighter duty that we're going to use it on the run. No, what happened was it was up. we had a retirement out of the water quality group where this guy wanted to drive this little truck, and he so he worked out of this little truck, and then he retired, and then we had to get full size truck for the next person, so they actually had a truck to work out of. And so then we just moved it over to the pool vehicle is what we did. So we took this little S10 and moved it over into the pool vehicle for... And that's the one that's going to get an extra year because... It's yeah, that we're, that we've been getting through this year on and Sounds we'll, good. we'll determine come budget time to see if it'll go through another one or if we're going to put it in the budget. It's a pool vehicle. It usually sits in the Chevy street. Yeah. Wow. We used to be all Chevy here. Wow. It'd be all Dodge. Right? It'd all be Dodge. Okay. Right? Well, just, are we <laughs> just out of curiosity, based on your experience with Chevys, Dodges, and Fords, you know, the how do you Fords rank have, the, the, the brands the co comparison wise? The Fords have held up better. I'd say Ford, Chevy, than Dodge. Dodge was horrible back in the day. We have they a lot of problems with transmissions and rear ends on the Chevys they as well. Fall apart. I, I thought and Ford, Ford had no problems with. Well, <laughs> no, I thought nervous here. Ford meant fix or repair daily. <laughs> so no, so anyhow, we're recommending that we execute purchase with Ford, um, North Bay Ford, 
in, in Santa Cruz, and ask the board to approve uh, the expenditure. Public comment on this item? Or not? Anybody have any trucks they want to sell? <laughs> we'll buy. We got three. We got three to sell. No. Okay. Back to the board. Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, I move that we accept the recommendation from the district manager and the memo dated January 9th for the purchase of three new district vehicles. An authorized and authorized district manager. And the amount of $125,405. And authorize a district manager to purchase. Yes. <laughs> and what, and what he said. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second. Okay. okay. I'll let you call the roll, would you? Director Go. Ferris? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. Director Calls? Yes. President Swan? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Okay, moving along, item 11D, okay. appointment, of, appointment of board uh, liaison. Right. Give me one second the district, here. Uh, Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee. One, one second, there's something happening huh? here. You can't find it? Uh, one okay. No, I got it right here, 11D. No, I, I apologize here. Um, as outlined in the, in the uh, Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee Governing Charter, the district shall appoint one board member to serve as a liaison to the committee uh, to be approved by both the board and uh, the committee. Uh, the LADOC Charter uh, Section 8 District Supports that the district shall appoint one board member to serve as liaison to the committee to be approved by the board. Uh, the board and a committee and reviewed after a one-year term or earlier if requested by the committee. Uh, the board members shall have no power to vote on or direct committee actions, but if there's, uh, if there's there to ensure the uninterrupted and full support of the general manager or designated staff to the committee to enable carrying out their duties. A preference for this appointment would be the board president. And also the grand jury report stated, uh, page 7 of 13, will also look into creating a role for designated board and our staff member to serve as a liaison to the, to the LADOC and its chairperson. So this is also a, a grand jury recommendation um, and it is in the LADOC. So it is recommended that you appoint, it um, doesn't have to be the board chair, but one of the directors as a liaison to the LADOC. Um, Duties, in case you're wondering, I don't see a, a lot of time commitment to be this liaison person. I don't see a lot of issues. Um, the LADOC committee is moving pretty smooth. They're, you know, they've got their charter done. They've just about got their annual report done. The projects are going well. I mean, I, I think LADOC is, is doing quite well. Uh, so I don't see this a very huge time commitment. But it is a requirement in their, in their charter, and it was a recommendation of the grand jury. And we did get a request from one of the LADOC committee members that we appoint this person. So I'd recommend that we appoint a, a person. If I could just offer a clarification. This was not one that the grand jury specifically required. It was one that the district offered up right. in response. As in, in a response, yeah. right. It was a response to the grand jury. Yeah. But, but it was a district commitment. It was a district commitment. It was a district commitment, yes. yes. Well, so from the LADA committee request, did I be? Or the no, it just, that's, it's in their charter. It could, oh, they they yeah. just say could they anybody. would like it to be the board chair, but it doesn't necessarily happen. Well stated. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm not, you know, I'm, it's I'm not a very big time not commitment. stuck in any of the committees right I, now. I, so. I, Steve, just so you know, that is an evening meeting. That's an evening meeting. Um, or it's quarterly. With, with Beverages. <laughs> Bring your <laughs> BYOB. They, they, they've been meeting like five times. Yeah, I don't even know if you need to attend. It's just that there's a liaison there for them to reach out to get to the board. Sure. You know, and I, I really don't even know if it's necessary, but it is, it is something the district said we do. I mean, because if there was a problem, I would bring it straight to the meet? board. They meet. So yeah, quarterly, five, we hear yeah. quarterly. Oh, 5.30 on usually a Tuesday or something. Five thirty, like or sometimes at the zoning no. fire. So, so yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um, but it's my understanding that the liaison does not have to yeah. attend. The you don't meeting. have to attend the meeting. It would just, just be somebody they could go to. You're making it awfully meetings. easy for me to, or difficult for me to say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think you need yeah. to attend. Yeah, you don't need to attend. Yeah. And you don't have to do it. Yeah, no, 
I'll, uh, I, I would, well, let's open it up for the board. As far as I'm concerned, yes, I would do it. Does anybody else want to fight me for it? Well, I, I'm just curious. I mean, you've been to a lot of those Latin meetings, right, Ray? Mm -hmm. Who would you recommend? Well, I... It states or in there. Have a it states in there that they would like the chair. I I, I try to, to to follow their lead. I would say the chair if the chair has time. Okay. Um, it's very little time commitment. There's not a lot going on. There's not contentious issues. Or, you know, this was done at a time put in there when they were having difficulty communicating. This is at a time when nothing is happening and they wanted to get something right. happening. Yeah. So something is happening now and we're driving this to completion They're as very fast happy. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I meet with them all the time. Just say yes. Yeah. 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 I have, I've said yes. I'm just, yeah, I'm I've not, actually gone to some of their meetings too, but well, I'm a long peak. Oh, that's when it gets contentious, right? <laughs> yeah. No. That was good. No, I haven't caused any problems. So the only thing I would say to that is um, I know other board members are uh, more familiar with Long Pico than I am, and sometimes uh, on these things, maybe a fresh face or fresh eyes is a good thing. Uh, so I would be willing to do this if Steve, you didn't want to do it or you couldn't do it. So I'm just volunteering as someone who doesn't have a lot of uh, beforehand knowledge about this, and so I'm not an expert on Long Pico, uh, but sometimes that's a good thing to have in a committee. So. Is um, anybody an expert on one <laughs> except maybe the three of us right here? <laughs> Any other board comments about this? I'd say it's a steel cage death match between you and Henrik. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can win. Two men I, 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 I'm fine with either one of you. Yeah, yeah, anybody anybody a yeah, exactly. Any comments from the audience? Anybody from Long Pico out there? No. Okay. Don't anybody really care? Want. It looks good for the board president to do it. Yeah, I think so. It's just a, it's a, yeah, not mandatory, but it's a good yeah. symbol or good um, gesture. The optics are nice on yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing it uh, at all. Right. That's so. a, Rick, do you? No, I, I don't mind you not minding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. I'm sorry. And I'll so, always help you with your stuff. We need a, thank you. We need a motion on this then? Yes. Right, yes. okay. Then, uh, now, the, I think the Ladakh Committee of the Charter has to approve the appointment as well on their end. I move that we appoint uh, Board President Steve Swan as the liaison to the Ladakh. And I'll second that. Holly, go on the roll. Director Ferris. Aye. Director Moran. Aye. Director Falls. Yes. President Swan. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. All right. Oh, finally something fun. Yeah. Your new business item E. <coughs> the probation tank ribbon cutting on yeah. it. The long awaited. Yeah. Item 11 E is the probation tank ribbon cutting. Uh, construction has been completed. We have not issued the notice of completion yet. The board has not seen that, but getting very close. Um, the, on the project, the original 100,000 gallon redwood water tank uh, constructed approximately 45 years ago, reached its life expectancy and was experiencing severe leakage. Understatement. The new 1.7 million, uh, 1.7 million dollar, 534,000 gallon welded steel tank will provide improved water storage, fire flow, conductive use, and reliability. In addition, uh, the new tank will improve water conservation and reduce uh, loss and, and revenue due to leakage. The new tank has been placed in service and is considered a milestone to the district in the district capital improvement projects program. And a ribbon cutting ceremony is warranted. The ceremony will be at the tank site, and the ceremony will also highlight the environmental sensitivity of the construction project. So we've also uh, put in an award to uh, the Engineering Federation or Con Construction Federation uh, as an environmental uh, milestone project because we worked with a four or five federally declared uh, endangered species very tight site. Um, the district did, did an incredible job. We even had James up there planting um, wildflowers, <laughs> Trans <laughs> transplanting wildflowers. <laughs> it was a very successful uh, construction and yeah. environmental. Uh, so uh, during the ribbon cutting I plan to have uh, uh, Dr. Jody McGraw there to speak about the endangered species that we worked around and, and uh, the fun we had with that. Do some posters. 
of the different uh, plants uh, and flowers and, and endangered species. And some good pictures of the old tank, the new tank. Uh, invite everybody and everybody uh, from all agencies and, and people. I would like to do it during a work day because of the other agencies. You'll get more people to come in the afternoon. I worry about the weather. As you know, it's a very tight site, so we'll work with the probation center to park down at the probation center parking lot and shuttle people up. But I think this is a chance to really show off one of a, a milestone of the district um, a capital improvement project, and especially a very uh, sensitive project uh, and working in endangered species and habitat and the ecosystem, sand parkland, uh, and so forth. It was a very successful project. So we need a date, is what I'm asking after all that. Uh, when you all think uh, some staff would like to do it late February, some staff would like to do it early March. Far enough in advance. Well, I, I need time for posters and, and get invitations out and so forth. And I also am a little concerned about weather, but I don't know if you can judge the weather anymore. It could be in the middle of July. Or yeah, right. Right. Avoid, avoid the spring breaks. Do we know when the spring breaks are? Um, Stephanie, you should it Easter. Is yeah, when's Easter? Easter, Easter is the 12th, April 12th, I think. Yeah, so it's April that 12. week of April 6th, the spring break. Mm -hmm. okay. So did we, didn't Holly, we pick a date or a couple of dates? You did. There was something. Mm, no, I guess not. Just late February or early March. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, due to weather and during uh, the work week to accommodate the public agencies. I think you'll get great attendance. It will help people be interested uh, depending on the weather. Yes. And depending on the weather. We, were the people of Scotts Valley know about this? Is sure. There, yeah, but, sure. I mean, I think it, wasn't there some kind of a notice that we sent to yeah. them about you had to do Water conservation and different things. Have we, we sent them a temporary notice? And we put the temporary in. Sure. Have we sent them a notice? No, we have not yet. No, we have not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we could put something out when we pick this date and invite, yeah. invite people. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. It is a tight site, but as long as we can use the parking lot down below and shuttle up, up to the district vehicles, shuttle up. Um, Are we going to hit it with a champagne bottle? Well, we'll clear something out. There's a concrete <laughs> block somewhere. Right? Well, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> hard items there. We'll do something to christen it and name it. You know, probation plan for but we'll, 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 we have to time to sell the name. Name rights, man. Name rights. <laughs> but, so right now, I'd like you all to pick a date. Or something. Get some, keep this moving. I'm happy with any of you. Yeah. 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 I'd like to have it during the week, you know. Preferably a Thursday. Because Tuesdays and Wednesdays are really busy. No, nobody really likes to do anything on Monday. So preferably a Thursday. Would you prefer a, a, a Thursday with a board meeting or without a board meeting? Oh, without. <coughs> no, so, with. So Thursday the 26th with. of March? Yeah, because the Thursdays that don't have a board meeting is when I am crushing on the uh, agenda, making oh. sure you all get your information. In. But it, when Santa Margarita? The last the Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. 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 How about March 5th? March 5th is a board meeting. Yes. I'm, I'm for that. Like 1 o'clock, <coughs> thirty something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good with any of it. Right. I'd like to also, though, ask that we make a specific Invitation to the, uh, to the passport. No, that definitely be the passport. Would yeah. Definitely be invited. I'm sure they're there. And that, and, uh, there. for me, we'll probably be later. Come up with a date. One, one more. The second week of March. No, no, I'm saying later in the day. So one one o'clock or one thirty, like well, two thirty ish. Okay, so we have the meeting starting at five five thirty, and oh, we're going to be right. shuffling and shuffling. Okay, we'll see. And this is this will be a board meeting. Correct. My director, Gina, because we'll have the five directors there, and we will be dedicating a facility. Would this be a board meeting or? Well, there system? may be an exemption for this, but right. I'll have to check. Uh, so maybe maybe a board. I meeting. thought there was a ceremony. I think there is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and we, we had a uh, event before when we first hired Brian. At right. where all the board members came and they had so definitely as long important. as we're not discussing business and all yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think there's Brian. an exemption for this, but I need to do that. <laughs> so you'll check in that. Jane will check yeah. into that. Yeah. Uh, if it has to be a board meeting, we'll have it noticed. So if it's if it's gonna be on a board meeting <laughs> day, then we have to be back 
here at 5.30 and with all the, I'm not sure how big the shuttle bus is going to be. Yeah. Unless we have, don't have a closed session. So mm -hmm. to, the, to the 12th, that's, a, that's not a version. Yeah. She but has all the objectives. Well, see, the problem with a, a non-board meeting <coughs> Thursday is that we are working on getting the board the agenda, for the agenda, agenda out, out the next day. Okay. So it's what, there's nothing we're really working on. Okay, let's go with the fifth. I, I like the fifth. March 5th. Friend of the wedding gods. I'll work on that. We don't need to vote on that, do we? Is it there in Ides of March? What is, what yeah, 15. 15. This does not require a vote. And uh, so, two o'clock, two thirty, two o'clock. Yeah. And we've invited the. I don't have to we'll invite anybody. Yet. We'll invite everybody we can think of. Depends on how many people, people are speaking. Yes. Yeah. 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 Get the hook. Very low. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mark Stone. Okay. Yeah. And David Terry. Chris so McPherson. McPherson. No. Mm -hmm. You're mine, Walt. Well, I'm we'll show an election here. So, this is a milestone. It is a milestone. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Great. That's all the new business, right? Yeah. Did you go to the public? Yeah. Mission. You know what you did for this? You did. Yep. Yeah. Consent agenda. So. Just, uh, President Swan, just to confirm, was there any public input on that item? Was there any uh, oral on the celebration? You know, we didn't give them a chance to. Anybody in the public want to talk about ribbon Sorry. cutting days? Time of the day? What's good for you, Chuck? You busy on the fifth? I will comment that it's not that long a walk, and if you want to be that, you know, if you want to cut time off of it, um, yeah, but, but, long walk. but you may have some people that I have a tough. You get to see a little of the. Um, maybe I can have. You go by the well site, sort of. Maybe I can have Jody mark out some stuff all the way too. We can mark some stuff out. No, it's not. I mean, people may walk back down. It's easier to walk down than. Uh, but it's just a little jaunt over I, to the uh, new probation well site. Too, right. Over there. That might be worth yeah. the directors seeing. Well, no. well, See where he spent a million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spent some and money out there. I'm just confirming uh, that this would qualify as a ceremonial event um, that does not have to be conducted as a notice meeting so long as matters of district business are not discussed. But, you know. okay. Cool. I won't bring it up if they won't. <laughs> Okay, so consent agenda. Okay. What are you doing the consent agenda? So, President Swan, for this, uh, you could ask if any board member or member of the public needs to pull any item from the consent agenda for discussion. And if so, then we treat that as a separate agenda item. And if not, um, then no action on the consent agenda results in approval. Does anybody on the board have any, can they want to pull from the consent agenda? This does not include the department's only one thing. So. That's right. Public? No? Okay. Uh, Make a motion that we accept the consent agenda or the minutes from the board of directors meeting December 5th, 2019. Okay. We don't have to it's make it You can do it either way, President Swan. No action results in approval, or you can have formal approval via motion as is indicated. No action, we'll just roll. Okay. No more Hollywood. Okay, district reports. Okay, you do, uh, we have uh, department status reports for the engineering, finance, and business and operations. We have department heads are here to answer any questions or you have any concerns. Or if any of the department heads like to point anything out of any special interest to the board. We're trying to do so. Yeah, I'm just going to point out. It's all in there. I would say my report does have the PG&E. Yes. Reconciliation. Yeah. So I mean that might be wow. something. Big are you send it to them? Are you, are you sending it to PGE? I'll probably wait until I find out from legal or if anyone else is actually successfully submitting. Copy the PUC. 
I mean, made it clear that they're not going to pay. No, I understand, but I think it's important that the people of the state of California understand what this policy costs yes. um, the state of California. Correct. It's not a hit. It, this is not a free thing that's being done. I agree. If you want me yeah. to propose a method of communicating this, I can. We have a big, you know, PUC practice, and we also understand, you know, lawsuits around these issues, and so I can propose a format. Yeah, I mean, this. this may not be a big deal for San Jose Water or mm -hmm. what have you, but it's a big deal for us. I agree. And and that's, that's, a, that. that's a redwood tank site replacement. Yeah, 125,000. And uh, your vehicles, too. You know, yeah. if, a lot of money. If the state of California wants to make this policy, there might need to be some funding to help with these small rural districts that are being disproportionately impacted by these actions. Make the state pay. Well, maybe, I mean, Mr. Stone, Mr. Monty might want to. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that was a high open mm -hmm. And that's probably low, right? I mean, there's probably things that we did that never got rolled into that. I mean, that's, um, that's mostly overtime. I'd say that that's a pretty solid number Is right it? there. I mean, the guys are very good at yeah. when there's a work order number issued and they're going to buy something, you know, they're... I mean, so I, went, you know, I went through every fuel time, purchase, the pick them out, gasoline, everything. 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 Couple years off of Nate's life. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. But the uh, staff, you know. Gray hairs. Nate did a great job. Yeah, an excellent job. Uh, Darren, on the, on your monthly report, the uh, Olympia well, are we going to re rehab the well 5A the same way we rehab the well 3? Olympia well? You're talking about quail? Quail well? Oh, so yeah, Olympia well, yes, well, yes. right, right, yes. exactly. Yeah, Is the work on the Olympia well? It was now complete, and now the, the work on the quail well starts. Is that the same rehab? Basically? I think it's the same process. Yeah. Yeah. So I did get a little tidbit back on that just yesterday. And the well column is clean of iron bacteria, so there will not be chlorination um, clean, cleaning on this one, so we won't have to use baker tanks, so that's a less of cost there. No baker tank because it will just straight discharge. And they do believe that it's just sand clogging the gravel pack. That we're just going to blow it back out. Yeah, blow it back out. Okay. So, so it should be a little bit less of a project than only three months process, yes. Do we three anticipate months. getting the same Both. yield from yeah. 90 to 350 gallons per minute? No. Don't count on that. Mm -hmm. like, like Martin Feeney said in the report from only three, lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, I think in its heyday in that well we knew it was like 150, 200 gallons. Right. Well, it's, uh, the quail hollow wells are not the big producer we've ever seen. We'll probably get, we'll probably be around 150 to 200. But they're an excellent water quality. Yeah, that's the thing. Is the water quality is really good. Yeah. One of the only wells is higher on manganese and some sulfate and H2S. And I'm particularly looking forward to hearing what the Bear Creek Estates consultants have to say. Those folks have been waiting a while. Mm -hmm. And it'll be great to start getting some information that we can take action on. Yeah, so the consultant has completed their evaluation and they're going to be submitting a draft report to staff going over multiple different issues and uh, options. Mm -hmm. Aerobic step. Aerobic mm -hmm. step. Yeah, they've got quite a few. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll hash it all out uh, with the consultant and uh, get it refined and then finalize the report. Yeah. That's great. And the, the people in Bear Creek States know that it's in this state. They've, they've been kept well, this presentation is just for staff. So it's we've not public the hearing. people in Bear Creek all But they know that, it, that this is coming, yes. basically. And that yeah. we're at the point where it's being presented now to staff. And we've kept good communications open with the folks in Bear Creek. Good. And then after staff reviews this, I imagine, we haven't talked yet, Darren, I imagine the next day we will be updating with people with their create right. once we get our update. Yeah, with the specific details. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. This is great. The other thing is we have the Long Pico tanks are, are out to bid. Uh, they're scheduled to open on February 6th. And we have an R, uh, uh, RFP out for uh, want people to take replacement construction management, which is similar to what we did in the basement things. 
So those proposals are to, uh, due January 23rd. So of the Long Pico projects, there were five? And we're finishing, or we're... The Long Pico PRVs are just being completed. Yeah. Uh, we're out to bid on the Long Pico tanks. Meters are done. Meters are done, uh, service lanes. We're, we'll be putting together a memo to the to the board here shortly on all of these projects and what we have done, which projects that we reevaluated and work with the Long Pico group and bring the board up to speed on projects and financing. Especially kind of waiting to get in the pricing of the, the six tanks, that'll be a big item and then we'll be able to tell where we're at on the remainder of the projects. It's going to be close. Yeah, that may, the tank projects may take up the rest of the assessment. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's going to be close. It may take up what? The rest of the assessment. Assessment district funds. Mm -hmm. It's going to be close. The issue being, of course, we've got X number of projects and a lot right. of money and we still have the projects to do. So. Right. right. And, and so we'll, we'll, we are definitely keeping the Lompico group in the loop and they're aware of it. And um, we put it all together. Once we, once we, the, big, the big question is the actual price. Now we can find, you know, Darren's will be you know, trying to handle contractors and we can find a contractor that's you know, used to this area, not afraid to work in La Pico, uh, keep the, co the cost down. You know, it's a tight, tight sites up there, ingress and egress of in La Pico Canyon. But there shouldn't be any real super large equipment. You know, you're talking a 10 wheeler and an excavator, you're not talking, you know. Your like, cranes are a little bit bigger. Yeah, you're not talking about huge <coughs> construction equipment. So we just hope that we can find a, a contractor that's worked in the area. Um, and we hope that uh, well, Darren pretty much assured that well, that'll be one construction season will be done in, uh, this summer up there with the tanks. Isn't it an idea to have them do all the tanks so they'd be more likely? Well, yeah, they'll, we'll, it, it is one contract and they'll, they'll strategically do them so we maintain some fire flow and, and, yes. and source up there. Mm -hmm. So the Lewis <coughs> tank, are you, are you going to put two tanks where the Lewis tank and the, the treatment plant yes, is? Yes, the treatment plant will be taken out, okay. the well will be abandoned, the, the yard will be basically scraped clean and two new 100,000 gallon uh, tanks okay, will be installed. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. And that's upper Lewis brought down. The yeah. And so what happens? Does, did Long Pico own the property where, that was behind the people's fence where the other Lewis tank There's was? a couple lot, there's a few lots up top there that we'll be bringing to the board to surplus. Yeah. Yes. Along with surplus property in general. Yes. yes. Would the people who live up there want to buy it, do you think? Well, they were known to you send out. Yes, yeah, well, does. of course, maybe yeah. they think well, they don't need to. <laughs> the gentleman <laughs> has contacted us. Yeah. And is interested. There's in an interest oh, property. Okay. The gentleman that owns the property adjacent. Okay. Thanks for the. <laughs> James, in your report, you mentioned the temporary poly tanks, and I'm just wondering. And Rick and I had a discussion before. Did you mention it to? I have not. No, okay. I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. If some of those poly tanks will be repurposed for um, reconditioning tanks down the road. Right. But if any of them are not necessary for that, if we have some extra poly tanks, please don't get rid of them. We may have a use for them. Oh, I have a use for them. For all of them? All of my them. redwood sites that don't need redwood Bingo. tanks on them can use those poly tanks. Bingo. <laughs> well, okay. I want maybe the temporary, uh, you know, during construction and so forth. There will be a time when we have. Excess poly tanks. Oh, yeah. Well, that's my point. Yeah, because so, you know, we, right. we, I think we talked at one time about yeah. when they when we did actually have an excess tank, get rid of it. Let's like right. get rid of tanks right. because we water capture and storage is going to be the mantra of the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we continue to get a lot of our water from surface. Yes. Especially doing very good right now. And hopefully, we get some rain next week, like we said we're going to, and continue. Bill will start moving some water further south. President Swan, just so you know, we've grouped all of these reports under one agenda item mm -hmm. um, for purposes of public comment, but you could take public comment at any time, um, either all at once or if questions come up as we go along. Does any, 
Does the public have any comment with respect to the department status reports that have been discussed? We can take a look at the uh, committee report. Does anybody from the committees have anything that they want to bring to the conversation? Well, I just one other comment on uh, for James on his report. I know it's re I'm repeating myself, but congratulations again for another month not exceeding our, our draw factor for fall break. I think that's a good thing, and every month we do that. Yeah, it may be, may be lucky, but a good year. It's something that we should do. Um, favor. Yep. So we need a committee. Thoughts, comments? Uh, no. Anything you want to bring up that's <coughs> significant? Yeah. Public? Nothing. Okay. Anything about the director's reports? Director's communication for the oh. Director Moran yeah. has some comment on uh, weeds. Yeah. What are you doing with weeds, Rick? Um, I, don't, I, I uh, pick my weeds. <laughs> and I pick my battles. Um, a weed is any plant that you don't particularly want, but invasive species are another thing. Um, so uh, the board let me, uh, or funded me, going down to uh, the Central Coast Invasive Weed Symposium that was held November 14th in Carmel Valley. Um, thank you for doing that. Um, and um, <clears throat> there were eight specific presentations. Um, it's hard to say any of these studies had a direct correlation with exactly what we experienced um, in the Olympia watershed or other places, but um, I had some general impressions that I came away from with this. All right? And um, they are as this. Um, you can't do any of these big projects without building partnerships. So there are eight people talking, and I'd say five or six of them mentioned how they develop partnerships to do these projects. Okay. So that was one thing that stood out to me. Public private or public? Uh, public private. Um, our good friend uh, Jody McGraw is uh, part of that. She was a co-sponsor. And this is a list of all the people that were involved and uh, Jody's is Jody McGraw Consulting, is Groundswell. So these people are always, you know, they're working with CAL FIRE, they're working with um, other parts of the state government that are interested in these kinds of issues. So they're building partnerships. They're not trying to, you know, so if it's a big project, you have to have help. It's not something you can just singularly go out and attack. Um, and one of the things, the, one of the first things they talked about was the, um, a, a project that's going on in the Pinnacle National Monument, and I was glad to see that they included the um, a guy by the name of Rick Flores, who's a Native American. I'm a Mushtun, uh Native American tribe, so the you know they were covering the bases about how to manage weeds and um, manage the um, manage the land. Manage the land. That's the right word. Okay. Um, there needs to be cooperation with various land management agencies. That's the same thing as a partnership. Uh, prescribed burns were a big part of uh, a lot of these individual projects. So um, I know when we've talked about the environmental uh, committee and fire <coughs> management, uh, that the fuel load is a big issue with our watershed. And prescribed burns is one of the ways that uh, people are dealing with that. So, and these people were, uh, you know, small scale. A lot of these projects are really small scale, but uh, giving you examples of what they're doing. Um, there were people that were working with cattle and goats as far as uh, you know, trying to combat invasive uh, species and weeds. So, and it was really well attended. Uh, there was uh, former director uh, Boffin was there. Um, Jody McGraw was there. Uh, I recognize a few other people that I've seen around. Um, and there was uh, probably 150 people there, uh, well attended on a Thursday, Tuesday morning. I'm going to get exactly what day it was. 
But the uh, last thing I'll leave you with, which is what they left us with, was uh, this woman by the name of Lynn Overtree. She's from the San Benito Agricultural Land Trust. And she said, encourage your children, encourage your grandchildren. This issue will be with us always. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. So that was uh, <coughs> my experience down there. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to share. Very good. Uh, look, Chuck, you were there. Anything you want to add to it? Okay. And, okay, so do we need to do anything with written communication? No, nothing added? needs to be done with those remaining agenda items. You could adjourn the meeting uh, whenever you are. Uh, One thing on those additional items, there was a uh, letter written from Bruce McPherson to us congratulating us on getting the green business certification. And are we, I, I noticed that's on the website, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we also planning on maybe doing an article in the, news, in the press banner? Didn't they do it? Did they do did they? on the green business or Yes. I think they did. In the paper? Yes. Oh, really I think I saw something. <coughs> yeah. In the press panel last week. Was it? No, it wasn't last week. week of December it's right here. Yeah. December there was one right letter. Uh, yeah. okay. There was one letter about the logo. It's in Somebody the informational like material. The choices. Yeah. That'll be the next choices. week. Your, uh, yeah, there's a letter in there about that thing. Is that from me? You'll have a decision. From me? You'll have that next yeah. Thursday. Oh, you'll have a big decision on the logo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't right. know how's, the, how's the voting going? I, right. I don't really, yeah. I'm going to have to defer to Stephanie. She'll probably, and closes tomorrow. Gina will probably have a, we probably shouldn't talk about the logo. Yeah. Not on the agenda. Yeah. Well, with that, then. Next Thursday. If there aren't any other comments by anybody here, then we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you all very much. Yay. Good job. 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 Good job.